Hello, hello, good evening. Can you hear me, my dears? Hello, Adrián. Hello, hello, my dear. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are going to wait that uh, people is joining us. Okay, today we are going to finish the section number four. Okay, so just wait a couple of minutes. Ahora vamos a terminar la sección 4, Adrián. Así es que vamos a esperar un minuto y si no empezamos nosotros. Good evening, Miss. Good evening, hello. Welcome, my dear. Good evening. 
Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Lorenita. Hello, how are you, my dears? Oh. We have Lorenita, we have Adrián. Oh, thank you. I know it's tiring, but remember Very that easy, it's man. our last day and tomorrow you're free. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's yes. A, yes. I know it's an enormous effort because you are very tired after work and i congratulate you because you do this big effort but later it's gonna be a very good choice for you okay les felicito por el esfuerzo que hacen verdad de estar acá sé que no es fácil después del trabajo pero eh, va a tener su recompensa no lo duden okay so i'm going Primero to digo. start yes that's gonna be that way okay so let me share again my screen just to show you okay for today we are going to uh complete the 4.10 lesson objective that says by the end of this class you will learn how to ask and answer simple past yes no questions and additionally you will practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in real life settings okay so remember that okay. we have been studying a simple past we have studied the regular verbs, we have studied the irregular verbs, we have learned about the pronunciation of the past tense for regular verbs. We have learned some um, ideas on how to memorize the past tense of the irregular verbs. And then we have learned how to use D as auxiliary for the past tense, okay? For questions and for okay. negative. So now, in the platform, you have this video that you can go and watch as much as you can in order that you can see the structure. And then you have the 4.12 knowledge check that says unscramble the questions, right? Unscramble the questions by putting the words in the correct order. So uh, the idea here is to have a structure like a question. For example, did you have a good summer? So remember that in order that you have a question in the past, you have to add the auxiliary did plus the subject pronoun plus the verb in the in base form because when you use the did, the did here, the auxiliary, this main verb is in the base form or presente, verdad? And then you um, complete the structure of the question. So that's the exercise about. And then uh, you have the 413 lesson objective that you will learn vocabulary, vocabulary casting summer activities. So we are going to try to complete this, but basically this is a vocabulary about summer, right? Uh, and this is in this video. Uh, the vocabulary basically is a class, fun, hiking, a movie, new people or friends, a picnic, pictures, a play, swimming, tennis and volleyball. And basically the exercise is uh, to uh, convert the verb into ing form, something that we, um, that we are going to uh, see in the video, okay? And then we go to 414, 415, excuse me. By the end of this class, you will develop skills in reading for main ideas and details. So basically in this part, you have to go and read these uh, weekend stories, okay? In these weekend stories, you have four different, three, Robert, Erin, and other ladies story. So you have to read uh, to understand what's the, the reading about. And after that, you will complete the final exercise of the section number four. Esa es una lectura comprensiva, ¿verdad? Ustedes van a ver que los párrafos están en pasado. Ok, no hay ejercicio de ese párrafo, solo es lectura comprensiva. Later you move to five. So five is going to start next week. Ok, vamos a comenzar con el número cinco la próxima semana. So I'm going to stop sharing. Vamos a dejar de compartir. And then I'm going to share the presentation that I have for you tonight. Ok. In this case, uh, let me show you. Okay. 
yes, no questions uh, with simple past or past simple with short answers. The affirmative sentence in this example is, I cook. Es una afirmación, ¿verdad? Yo cociné. You cook. He, she, it cook. We, they cooked. Past. But the question, remember that in the past, to make a question, we use the auxiliary did. Did I cook? Did you cook? Did he, she, it cook? Did we cook? Did they cook? And you can answer only two, uh, in two possible ways. Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Yes, you did, no, you didn't. Yes, he, she, it did, or no, he, she, it didn't. Yes, we did, no, we didn't. Yes, they did, no, they didn't. And that's it, es responder sí o no, no more. Okay, I have the same possibility of yes, no answers for the verb be, right? For example, was I happy? In this case, since verb to be stands alone, recuerda que el verbo to be es un verbo que se mantiene solo, ¿verdad? Stands alone. Eh, entonces, eh, significa ser o estar. Y eh, tenemos que... Eh, Utilizarlo, to use the verb in the same way, to give the past, ¿ok? Eh, tenemos que utilizar el, el verbo de la misma forma eh, para dar respuestas en el pasado and we don't need any other auxiliary verb in this case. No necesitamos ningún otro verbo auxiliar for verb be because it stands alone, porque el verbo no lo necesita, ¿verdad? For example, was I happy? ¿Estaba feliz? Yes, you were. That's it. Were you happy? Yes, I was. Was he, she, it happy? Yes, he, she, it was. Were we happy? Yes, we were. Were they happy? Yes, they were. That's it. We don't need, no necesitamos el do en este caso, ¿verdad? Porque el verbo eh, es capaz de eh, auxiliarse solo. Okay, if the answer is negative, you say, no, you weren't. No, I wasn't. No, he, she, it wasn't. No, we weren't. No, they weren't. But in the past tense with other verbs that are not the verb be, you have always to use did, okay? Con cualquier otro verbo que no es el verbo to be, usted tiene que utilizar did. Did I study? Yes, you did. No, you didn't. Did you cook? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Did you... Uh, Did you go shopping? No, uh, or did she, did he, she, it uh, go shopping? No, ¿verdad? No, it didn't. No, he, she, it didn't. Right, man? Y, el, y, y el verbo to be es como, o sea, es como el did, es como el auxiliary, porque el verbo no cambia. Los verbos, o sea, sean regulares o irregulares, los que usemos cuando damos oraciones con el verbo to be no van a cambiar, igual que si usamos el, el auxiliar, el día. Exacto. Lo que pasa es que con el verbo to be no va a utilizar ningún otro verbo. Por eso les decía, the verb be stands alone. El verbo to be es, es por sí solo. Eh, se mantiene solo, no lleva ningún otro verbo. Porque, es, está, es, porque el único. Es, ajá, es el único que se sostiene por sí y, y precisamente porque solo lo utilizamos para hablar de ser o estar, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh -huh. no necesitamos ningún otro verbo en, en esas oraciones. Si es, sí, yo digo, estuve estudiando, entonces ah, mantengo... Sí, Ajá. pero es que ese es, un, ese es otro tiempo, ya no es pasado, ah. sino, sino que es un pasado y otra continuo, cosa, entonces. se llama pasado continuo. Y ahí sí, el verbo to be sirve como un auxiliar para decir, I was studying last night. Yo estuve estudiando la noche Pero anterior. Ahí, Ajá, ahí te... cambia, cambia el verbo. O sea, no lo dejo en presente, ¿verdad? sino que lo no. pongo en pasado. El verbo queda en pasado. Pero su verbo principal, que es estudiar, queda con ing, ¿sí? Pero uh -huh. ya no estamos hablando de simple past. Ese se llama past continuous. Es el pasado continuo. 
¿Qué es un pasado Vaya, es otra cosa. Es otra cosa. Ajá. Es una actividad that took place in the past, but it has to do in the present. Es una actividad que tomó su lugar en el pasado, pero que todavía interfiere con mi presente, ¿sí? Yo digo, I was studying last night. Estuve estudiando an anoche. Significa que mi actividad todavía no ha terminado. Yo puedo seguir estudiando o todavía no he hecho mi examen, ¿sí? Acuérdese que el ando, endo uh -huh. es una actividad que ya no corresponde a, a un simple past, sino a un past continuo, a un pasado continuo. Es como cuando yo digo, eh, eh, a ver, eh, no los quiero confundir con esto, pero sí eh, quiero aclarar esto para que, para que sepan para qué sirve. Alguien me dirá, y teacher, ¿para qué sirve el, present, el, el pasado participio de los verbos? Ah, sirve para hacer el tiempo que se llama presente perfecto, que ustedes no van a estudiar más adelante, el present perfect. ¿Qué es el present perfect? Es una actividad que también ocurrió en el pasado, pero que todavía me afecta a mi presente. I have been eating uh, healthy food. Okay. I have been eating. He estado, been, el participio de be, been. I have been eating uh, healthy food. He estado comiendo comida saludable. O sea, significa que eso todavía es una actividad que continúa en mi presente o tiene relación con algo de mi presente. No ha terminado, ¿verdad? Entonces, este tiempo, el presente perfecto, como el, como el pasado continuo que, que Lorena nos plantea, son verbos que sí tienen algún, alguna connotación de pasado, pero que todavía interfiere en mi presente. ¿sí? En cambio, el pasado simple es una actividad que pasó, pasó. Por ejemplo, were you happy? Yes, I was. Sí, estaba feliz, punto. Terminó, ¿verdad? ¿Sí? Entonces, eh, no, no hay ninguna continuidad al presente, ¿verdad? O sea, solo, solo eh, oraciones muy simples de pasado. De pasado, de algo que, más, que ocurrió, ¿verdad? punto, ¿verdad? Ocurrió, punto, uh -huh. pero ya no tiene ninguna interferencia con mi presente, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Entonces, Bye. Okay. En, en ese caso, ya eh, ahorita vamos a ver también el, el pasado de B, nos vamos a enfocar solo en B, pero, perdón, tuve a bien... Ponerles aquí, ¿verdad? Para que lo vean contrapuesto. ¿Cómo son los pasados simples con el verbo be? ¿Y cómo son los pasados simples con otros verbos que no son be? Entonces, básicamente, los pasados con be utilizamos was para los singular pronouns. ¿Cuáles son los singular pronouns? I, he, I, you, no, he, she, it. Solo, mm. solo he, she, it. I, he, she, it. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Ajá. Para eso yo utilizo was. Pero para todos los demás, para you, para we, para they, utilizo where. ¿Sí? Ok. Uh -huh. Entonces, eh, was I happy? Yes, you were. Were you here? ¿Estabas aquí? Yes. Or, was Lorena here? Yes, she was. Sí, ¿verdad? O, uh -huh. eh, were you, eh, Adrián, were you sick? Y Adrián dice, no, I wasn't. No, no estaba enfermo, ¿verdad? ¿Ok? Uh -huh. eh, en cambio, si utilizo otro verbo como study, en este caso, did we study? Yes, we did. ¿Ve? Eh, tengo a ley que utilizar el auxiliar, ¿verdad? Did en este caso. Y una respuesta corsa, corta, corta, solo es, yes, we did, no, we didn't. ¿Perdón, Adrián? El auxiliar, el auxiliar did es como el auxiliar... Eh, tú en, en presente. ¿verdad? Exactamente. Es el mismo ah, rol. Y la, la, la pregunta que hacía Lorena, para ver si tengo claro, es, por ejemplo, um, was, eh, es como una, eh, porque el was study eh, es, es study en verbo principal. El was es como, vendría siendo como un, como una especie de auxiliar, ¿verdad? Sí, el was se vuelve un auxiliar, en este caso que es un pasado continuo, se vuelve auxiliar del verbo study, pero en ese tiempo que se llama pasado continuo. Pero en el simple present, en el, en el presente simple, eh, where es el verbo principal, no necesita un verbo auxiliar, ¿verdad? Se mantiene el solito, ¿sí? Ok, entonces okay. Para, que, para que hagan la diferencia, ¿verdad? Lo que estamos viendo ahorita es, 
simple past, pasado simple. Cuando ya usamos otros tiempos, eh, como ese, ¿verdad? Eh, que Lorena decía, I was studying last night, ese ya no es pasado simple, sino que se llama past progressive, pasado progresivo. Porque inició la acción en el pasado, pero tiene todavía eh, interferencia o, o injerencia en mi presente. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, sí, ya puede... como la forma en la que uno pregunta, vea, ya, ya más o menos yo también le sí. comprendí, porque no es lo mismo decir, ¿cocinaste? a ¿Qué hiciste ayer, por ejemplo? Ajá, did o you sea, cook? es una acción puntual, ¿verdad? Es did una you... acción puntual con la que sí. se usa el to be. Uh -huh. Ajá. Por ejemplo, ¿cocinaste? ¿Did you cook uh, yesterday? Ahí solo la respuesta va a ser, yes, I did, o no, I didn't. Yes. Pero cuando usted pregunta, what were you doing yesterday? Ah, eso es otra cosa. Entonces, eh, ¿qué estuviste haciendo ayer? Entonces, y además es una WH question, entonces tiene que proveer más información. If you ask me, I can say, well, I was cleaning the house, I was listening to music, I was watching TV, y le empiezo a decir lo que estuve haciendo, ¿verdad? Es, ya es otro tiempo, ¿ok? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So that's the difference between the simple past with be and the simple past with uh, other verbs. Using the auxiliary did to um, to have to, to elaborate questions and to elaborate negatives. Okay, welcome, my dear Claudia. Okay, look here. I did. I'm sorry. But... Don't worry. I know <laughs> it's difficult. I know it's difficult. Don't yes. worry. Yes. Yes. I finish my work at. 8, 8 p.m. Oh and then, <laughs> yes. So you went in a, you came in a rush home and I know it's very tiring, but I appreciate you're here because you're interested in learning. So I hope that tomorrow you can rest and you can have the weekend to relax, okay? okay. Excellent. <laughs> yes, I know it's not easy because during the weekends we have many things to do at home. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I, I, I will work. Oh my God. Well, yes. well, 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 I know it's easy to say and difficult to do, but let's thank God that we have to work. Okay. I know it's difficult, but there are many people that it's like waiting for a job. And so we are very uh, lucky. We can say are blessed to have one. So sometimes we have to do it. Okay. 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 Thank so, you, teacher. <laughs> I encourage you, I encourage you, you can do it. Okay, um, look, uh, in this case, what I, what I would like to do is that you can formulate the question and that then you can provide the answer. For example, here, they went to a restaurant last night. This is an affirmative sentence, right? If you see, they are using the past of the main verb, went, right? But when I, when I elaborate the question, I use the auxiliary, did they go? Ya no utilizo el pasado, ¿verdad? Sino el eh, base form, la forma base o presente. Did they go to a restaurant last night? Okay. So you see the structure changes. And I have only two possible answers. Yes, they did or no, they didn't. Okay. Eh, esas son las yes, no questions, que solo tengo que responder sí o no. But if you ask me, where did they go uh, last night? It's different, right? I have to provide information. They went to a restaurant. But my now, I would like that you can focus on, on, on elaborate the question of number two, three, and four, and that you can provide the negative, the affirmative, and the negative short answer. Okay. Do you have questions? Tenemos preguntas? No. No. No, teacher. Vaya. Eh, solo somos tres, creo que no lo voy a mandar al breakup room, fíjense. Lo vamos a hacer. Nos dividimos. Solo one for one. One, 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 one each one. Así lo vamos a hacer. <laughs> each one for you. <laughs> each one for each everyone. One. Okay. Vamos a tratar de hacerlo acá. One for me. Okay. Okay. It rained yesterday. Llovió ayer. ¿Cómo me quedaría la pregunta? Did it rain? Did it? 
Ok, perdón que lo voy a hacer mayúscula para que lo vean. Did it rain, rain. rain. yesterday? Yesterday. Ok, vean. Eh, ya no pongo el question mark porque está ahí, ¿verdad? Pero, eh, did it rain yesterday? Entonces, vea, utilicé did as auxiliary y el verbo me quedó en presente, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. La oración uh -huh. en pasado decía rained, utilizaba pasado, pero como estoy haciendo una pregunta, I'm formulating a question, and I have the auxiliary did, I just have to keep the verb in the base form. Ok, what are the possible answers? Yes, yes. it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Y eso es yes, sí, did. ¿verdad? Ok. ¿Y la respuesta negativa? ¿The negative answer? No, it didn't. No. Okay. No, it didn't, right? No, it, comma, it didn't. 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 Ok, and that's the simple answer, no, ¿verdad? Ok, no. the number three, the airplane. The Vea, air... took off, took off is a two word verbs. El took off es un verbo de dos palabras que significa despegar, ¿verdad? The airplane, the airplane took airplane off a three take, take off sería. Ajá, did, did, did the airplane did the take airplane off. Off. Did the airplane take, take off? Eh, vean, take interesante, off. cuando tenemos un two word verbs, el eh, two word verb, el que cambia es la primera parte, ¿verdad? Take off. Take off. Take off. Did the airplane take Three. off? Yes, it. Uh, Aquí yeah. me faltó, ¿verdad? Did the airplane yeah. take off at, at Three. Three. Forty. 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 A three forty-seven. PM. Did the airplane take off at three forty-seven PM? So, the possible yes. 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 Yes, yes it did. Yes. Yes. It did. Okay. And what about the negative? No, it didn't. No, no, it didn't. No. It didn't. Okay, lo vamos a dejar contracted. La, la respuesta no puede ser yes, the airplane did? No. No. No, en todo caso, si yo quiero agregar más información, digo yes. The airplane lo puedo hacer completo. Vamos a hacerlo para, para que vea cómo queda. Yeah, yeah. Puedo decir, yes. The yeah. airplane. Sería una took. respuesta larga, ¿verdad? Aquí se sería, aquí sería took plane. off, ¿verdad? Yes, ahí, ahí sí, porque took ya off. se vuelve una oración afirmativa. Yes, took yes. Off. The air, hasta aquí, ¿verdad? Hasta aquí es una parte. O sea, uh -huh. siempre tengo que decir, yes, it did. Y aquí tengo que decir, the airplane. Y vuelvo a repetir básicamente lo que ya estaba arriba. The airplane took off at, at 3.47 p.m. Ajá. Entonces, eh, así nos quedaría. Pero siempre eh, tiene que ir el yes it did. Siempre va la respuesta corta primero, aunque yo después de una respuesta más larga. No sé si me di a entender, eh, mi estimado. Adrián, sí. sí. sí la, la, la pregunta era porque allí define eh, un sujeto ya en este específico, airplane. Uh -huh. Sí. Ejemplo, en la respuesta uh -huh. corta es básicamente decir sí o no. Ya en la sí. otra parte es reafirmar, ¿verdad? Lo que, lo que nos está la respuesta que nos están pidiendo. Ok, look, Jenny said goodbye to her friend. So how it should be the question? Did Jenny say? Did Jenny say, Jenny say, say goodbye? Did Jenny say goodbye to her, to her friend? Y ahí es el question mark, ¿verdad? No lo pongo porque ya está ahí al final. Pero recuerden, remember that always there is a question. Eh, you have to write the question mark. Okay, so yes? She did. She did. 
Yes, she did. And what about the negative? No, no she didn't. didn't. No, ahí ya tenemos el no, entonces solo decimos no, she didn't. She didn't. No, no me daba cuenta que, que estaba repitiendo el not. No. Sure. Mande, pregunta. adelante. Eh, eh, bueno, en la clase, en el módulo anterior teníamos una, un ejercicio en el cual si uh -huh. decíamos de una tercera persona dice seis, eh, se pronunciaba ses. Sí, se dice no, ses. No, el caso. Sí. Eh, no, aquí se dice say porque es presente y aquí se dice said. Jenny said. Said en pasado. Eh, ah, perdón. No, aquí se mantiene. A ver, vamos a, vamos, ya sé que es lo que me pregunta. El, el pasado que, es uh -huh. said. Va. Jenny said goodbye to her friend. Es said, el pasado es said. Como said en español, ¿verdad? Tengo said. Did Jenny say? Aquí digo say porque eh, el verbo está en presente y cuando yo utilizo un auxiliar, sí. aquí ya no aplico la regla de tercera, porque la regla que usted me está preguntando es la regla de tercera persona singular. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Pero aquí sí. estamos en pasado simple para la tercera persona, en pregunta. Did Jenny say goodbye to her friend? Jenny le dijo adiós a su amigo. Entonces, si yo lo voy a, eh, para hacer lo que me dice Adrián, eh, me quedaría así, pero esto ya no es pasado. Es presente, ¿verdad? Sí, y el sí es porque se utiliza el auxiliar. Sí. Esa es la pregunta, ¿correcto? Okay. El 6, exactamente, se dice 6 porque el verbo no cambia, eh, porque no, a ver, espérate, ya moví todo y le voy a, le voy a ocasionar. Vale. Eh, se dice 6. Porque eh, estoy utilizando el auxiliar did, entonces mi verbo se queda en presente, en, pre, en forma base, ¿verdad? En, en no, no, no está eh, conjugado. conjugado para ninguna persona. Lo que Adrián dice es esto. Okay. Jenny, vamos a hacer una oración en presente simple. Jenny says hello. Yes. O goodbye, vamos, yes. a decir, okay. vamos a mantener el mismo, el mismo ejercicio. Goodbye. To her friend. Her friend. Yeah. Va, pero esta no es una oración en pasado. Esta es una oración en presente. Aquí lo que dice es, Jenny le dice adiós a su amigo o amiga. ¿Sí? Pero aquí lo que yo estoy diciendo es, le dijo Jenny, Jenny le dijo adiós a su amigo, le dijo, le dijo. ¿Verdad? Le dijo Jenny adiós a su amigo y la respuesta es, sí. O no, ¿verdad? Y en la sí. primera, en el donde está el 4, ¿verdad? En la affirmative sentence lo que dice es, Jenny le dijo, pasado, le dijo adiós a su amigo. Entonces, vea, pero es interesante porque aquí, aquí afinamos la pronunciación. Cuando es un verbo, cuando está en pasado, este verbo se dice ser, ser. Esta ahí se convierte sí. en una e, ser, ser. Cuando yo estoy utilizando... El auxiliar TIR para hacer una pregunta o para hacer una, una eh, oración negativa, se mantiene el verbo en forma base, say, ¿verdad? En presente sin conjugar, say. Y cuando yo digo una oración en presente simple, ahí sí le aplico la regla de la tercera persona singular, third person singular, says. Jenny says goodbye to her friend. No sé si me di a explicar, me di a entender, perdón, o si logré explicar la diferencia entre una y otra pronunciación. Yes, teacher. Ok, Adrián. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Ok, excelente. Tenía la idea, pero quiero confirmarla. Ok, excelente. Ok. Now, look. Uh, let, let's go again to yes, no questions with short answers. Veamos, aquí ya las tenemos revueltas, mire. Did you come to class? Let me, just let me open my super duper spotlight. Okay. Just let me move here. Did you come to class today? Yes, yes I, I did. did. Oh no, I didn't. Vea, estoy utilizando did porque mi verbo principal es come. Come. Okay. Did you eat breakfast this morning? 
Yes, I did or no, I didn't. Esas son las posibles respuestas. Yes, I did or no, I didn't. Fuera diferente si fuera una information question, que ya la vamos a ver más adelante, que yo dijera, uh, what, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? Es diferente porque ahí usted me tiene que responder qué desayunó. I, ate, I can give you a lot of information yes, about I, the action. I right. ate eggs, I ate pancakes, I ate uh, coffee, I, I drank coffee, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, ¿Verdad? Pero aquí la pregunta no es qué comió, sino si comió, sí o no. Did you eat breakfast this morning? And if you see, we have the auxiliary did and the main verb, which is eat, remains in the base form. Este se mantiene en la forma base. Ok, We, una pregunta con bien en pasado. Uh, for the subject you. Were you, try, were you tired this morning? Aquí el yes, verbo I es will. el principal, ¿verdad? Estabas cansado esta mañana, no hay ningún otro verbo, porque el verbo to be se mantiene solo con su propio meaning, que es ser o estar, ¿verdad? Y la respuesta es... Sí, yo quiero poner, por eh, ejemplo, en mi answer, uh -huh. I want to say in two different things, por ejemplo. Yes, uh -huh. I was, but I'm still feeling tired. Ah, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's possible. Yes, you can say, yes, I was, and I am... Eh, And I continue being tired or I'm still tired. Pero ya en presente, vea. Eh, en progresivo. Uh -huh. uh, I'm still tired. Es, yo aún estoy cansada. En presente. Uh -huh. Or I'm tired. Or I'm, I'm, I'm still. Or I continue feeling tired. Y continúa sintiéndome cansada. Esta última opción es un presente progresivo. I continue uh, feeling tired, right? Y le agrego el ENG, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. sí. Exacto, sí. porque sí. le está dando continuidad a la acción. Ok. okay. Was, uh, were any of your classmates late today? Yes, they were. Everybody. Or oh, no, they were. <laughs> Or everybody came late to class today. <laughs> no exception. <laughs> ok, mm -hmm. was it sunny yesterday? Vea, yeah. was it sunny yes. yesterday? ¿Estuvo soleado ayer? Yes, it was. No, yes, it wasn't. Ok, estuvo soleado. El verbo to be se mantiene by itself. It, it stands by itself. Did you buy lunch yesterday? The main verb is buy. You have the auxiliary did here to formulate the question. Yes, I did. Yes, it, yes I did. No, I didn't. Were you happy yesterday? Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Was yesterday Monday? Yes, it was. Or no, it wasn't. Aquí, por ejemplo, no, it wasn't. It was uh, Wednesday. ¿Verdad? Yo puedo dar información adicional si, si acaso eh, deseo, ¿verdad? Did you go to bed early last night? Yes, I did. Y aquí yo puedo decir, I went to bed at, at 10. ¿verdad? Pero ahí ya, después del I did punto, ya es una oración afirmativa. I went to bed, fui a la cama, ¿verdad? At 10, a las 10. Ok, were you at school yesterday? Eh, digamos que yo respondo, no, I wasn't. Hasta ahí podría haberlo dejado, pero yo puedo dar información adicional si yo quiero y puedo decir, I was at the library. Pero ahí ya me cambia y agrego una oración en pasado simple con su verbo principal en pasado. I was in the library. Estuve en la librería. Did your friend phone you last night? Yes, she did. Or no, he or she didn't. Vea, aquí, eh, Adrián, estamos hablando de su, eh, su amigo, ¿verdad? Y aquí yo respondo en una short answer para la tercera persona. Yes, she, yes he or she did. No, or he, she didn't. Was your teacher angry yesterday? Vea, was your teacher angry yesterday? I'm talking about in this case, he or she? Yes, she was. No, she wasn't. Did people fly to the moon in 1969? 
Yes, they did. Ve aquí, people. En este caso, people lo traslado al subject pronoun they, ¿verdad? A collective. Este es un collective noun, un nombre colectivo, ¿verdad? Did the sun rise this morning? Vea, the sun, it. Yes, it did. Did you smile this morning? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Vea, was it three o'clock uh, ten minutes ago? Estoy hablando de la hora, ¿verdad? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Did you clean your home yesterday? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Were you, were some dinosaurs very big? Yes, they were. Did you live in England last year? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Did your teacher, ve, aquí estamos hablando de su profesor, ¿verdad? Podría incluso decir, did she, en lugar de your teacher. Did she wear shoes yesterday? Yes, she did. No, she didn't. Okay. Okay, now it's our turn to practice. It's our turn to speak. Let's talk about your last vacation. Uh, in the conversation, it says, did you enjoy? Yes, I did. Y agrego, ¿verdad? Una oración en este caso en pasado simple. I enjoyed my last vacation. Uh, did you go to the beach? Yes. Aquí podría incluso haber dicho, yes, I did. Oops, excuse me. Vamos a poner en modo edición. Yes. Veamos acá. Yes, I did. para que mantengamos las respuestas cortas. Y luego pauso con un punto y digo, I went to the beach with my family. Did you go to the mountains? No, I didn't. I didn't go or I, I did not go or I, aquí puedo decir, ¿verdad? I did not go or I didn't go to the mountains. Después de la coma ya es una oración afirmativa. I went to the beach. Did you visit your family? Yes, I did. Y aquí yo puedo dar información adicional. I visited my family in the United States. Visited. ¿Se recuerdan? Visit termina en T, ¿verdad? Y los que terminaban en T o D, ¿qué ocurría? T o D se le agregaba ¿Cómo? ID. Ajá, is, ajá. Se pronunciaba ID. Exacto, se pronunciaba ID. Es correcto. I visited. My family in the United States. Okay. So, did you rest? No, I didn't. Eh, o puedo decir, I didn't rest. ¿Verdad? I traveled to the United States. Okay, now, it's your turn to practice. I would like that you can go. This time, yes, I need that you go to the breakout room. Esta vez sí vamos, aunque solo somos, estamos los tres, pero quiero que eh, hagamos el breakout room for you to talk about your last vacation, para que ustedes puedan hablar acerca de su última vacación, that you can take turns and that you can share, okay? So what I expect from you is that you use did as auxiliary to formulate the question and that you use uh, the verb in simple past for the affirmative sentences and that you use did for negative sentences. Do you have questions so far? ¿Tenemos preguntas? No, teacher. Ok, please join.
year. The last year I travel travel uh, Cancun and I travel to Cancun. Travel to Cancun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mm -hmm. I swim swim uh, sw swam como swam. I swam. swam. I swam with um come delfines what the what? dolphin i swam with dolphins i swam to dolphin with 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 dolphin. Dolphin. with dolphin with, with dolphin mm -hmm. it's a beautiful experience it was and it was beautiful experience experience That's experience right. okay so claudia did you enjoy it Yes, yes, I um, who yeah. do you who did you travel with? Who with uh, mm -hmm. with my my friends? Ah, okay. Yes, only 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 my friends. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. I don't know who else. Yeah. <laughs> when was uh, no? What was your favorite food in Cancun? Uh, um, I eaten eaten. I no. ate ate. I ate mm -hmm. um, tacos. Um, um, I ate uh, pozole. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I mm -hmm. like it. I like it, but I prefer uh, eat tacos only. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Um, Adrian, when was your last vacation? I I went in. Mm -hmm. in uh, Berlin city. Yeah. Uh, when? I when what? Decided my my parents um, to uh, my. I visited. I visited. I visited. I visited my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, I visited my uncle. Okay. Um. What? Uh, what do you do? What did you do? What did you do uh, in Berlin? I I went to Laguna Ale, uh, Laguna Ale, of uh -huh. Alegría Alegría uh, Alegría Laguna I Como son uh, nadar? I swam. No, I swam. I, I, I swam a little um, because is 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 uh, a a super. Ah, because it 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 has sulfur uh, uh, sulfur. Okay, and I I rested very much. I rested, okay. I rested very much. Excellent. Very okay. good. Enjoy it. Did you enjoy it? I I did. I did. Yes, I did. I did. Yes, I did. I enjoy the the weather and I enjoy the weather. Okay, excellent. What, what, um, what kind of food did you taste in Usulutan? Excuse me. What? I, uh -huh. uh, what kind what? of food? What kind of food did you taste? Okay. Did you try? 
the the typical the typical I ate mm -hmm. I ate the typical food. Okay. Um, how many time did you stay in Usulutan? How much? How many times? Cuánta vez? Time did you, uh -huh. Cuánto tiempo estuviste ahí? Ah, how many eh, times? perdón. Eh, eso sería how long. Ah, how, how many long? times? Eh, Cuántas veces he ido? Then, how long did okay. you stay? How long did you stay? Cuánto eh? tiempo? Ah, Cuánto okay. tiempo estuviste? How long? Eh, I. ¿Cómo se dice stay? Stay, ¿verdad? Stayed. Stayed. I stayed. I stay, uh, uh -huh. I, I stay um, a week uh, the last the last the last time uh -huh. uh, because I I went because I go uh, every day every year. Okay. Uh, I stay for a week. For a week. Cuando digamos la cantidad de tiempo que nos estuvimos, decimos for a week, for a month, or for one day, for a year. Okay? Okay. Solo faltó la palabrita for. for. A week. Okay. Excellent. Did you ask Lorena? ¿Ya le preguntaron a Lorena? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Now you have to ask so many, many things. <laughs> Okay, Claudita, you can start. Um, where, where you did you? Where did you? Where did you? Where did you uh, visit the last? Oh, oh do, no. Where? Where did, did you go? You where did go? You go? Mm -hmm. The last vac vacation. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, we don't have uh, as a family vacation in this year, but last year I went alone to Mexico City. Hey. Well, exactly. Uh, I were I was on. I can't see him. Uh, Monterrey. Oh. I Is went to the. El 20 Congreso del Tecnológico de Monterrey. Ah, Monterrey, Monterrey Tecno, Tecnological Institute. Uh -huh. It wasn't a, a vacation, but uh, I can say that I enjoy, enjoyed it. Okay. okay. Um, Next question. What? <laughs> you have the chance to have a lot of questions for her. <laughs> uh, you, no. Pero, ¿cómo se dice? Ah, no. You, no. Did, did, uh, drink? Did you drink? Did you drink? Did you drink? Um, alguna, ¿cómo se dice alguna? Some special Some, uh, so, Mexican drink? Some special me Mexican drink? No, tequila. I didn't. <laughs> no. I, I, I was with my co-workers and my boss, so I can uh, <laughs> I, I can make whatever I want. So <laughs> uh, I no, I did no, I didn't no. take. I no. I didn't I didn't drink or I don't drank or no I couldn't. Uh, in this case, drunk, but the yeah. ideal is I didn't drink. That's okay. it. Mm -hmm. okay. It tastes, no, no, porque no. Lo que pasa es que taste is como probarla, verdad? Pero al final usted dijo que you couldn't drink because you were with your. Entonces cerramos con el verbo, verdad? Drink. O pudo haber dicho I couldn't okay. test, I couldn't try. In este caso, I couldn't try any Mexican beverage or I couldn't try any Mexican drink. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I couldn't try any Mexican drink. Okay. 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 Um, it was very cold. Very, very cold. Monterrey at December is very, very cold. Under uh, three grades. Ay, no sé cómo se dice. ¿Cómo? Perdón. Excuse me, can you repeat? Ah, I was uh, three, depending, Fahrenheit or Celsius degree below zero. Below. When I'm you're below. talking about temperature, you use below, below zero. And you say below. degrees. Okay. Three degrees, if you don't know Fahrenheit or Celsius or whatever, is mm -hmm. enough that you say I was three, minus three degrees or three degrees below zero. Okay. Puede decir de las dos maneras, minus 3 degrees, que es esa de menos 3, ¿verdad? Abajo de la escala de 0, o 3 degrees below 0. Okay. 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 Excellent. And that's all. <laughs> Adrián, now it's your turn it's to really, ask. <laughs> it's really weather in, in Monterrey. I'm sorry? This is really weather in Monterrey. If it's really three, what? Three degrees. Really well? Yes, 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 yes. It's very cold. I don't know how how many meters. Um, ay, ¿cómo era sobre, teacher? Um, eh, a ver, uh, under, oh, below. Uh, era, era above, 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 porque estaba con el below zero, me cambió. Above. Eh, sería, I don't know how, how many, porque los puede contar, how many matters eh, above sea level. Above sea level. I don't know, but, but it is a cold country. It is a, a cold country, yes. A cold okay. weather country or a country with cold weather? A country with cold, cold weather. Mm -hmm. And did you go another city? To or an, only Monterrey? To, a, to another city. Um, yes, I went. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat me the, the, the question? If you, if the, did you go another city in your, in your travel? Okay, yes, I did. I went to the DF and I visited the Basilica de Guadalupe. <laughs> mm, the Zócalo, the main places. <laughs> The Zócalo, eh, just the, 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 bueno, the Basilica, just the Basilica, and that's all, because we make a scale, and in the time between one and other flight, we, um, aprovechamos, no sé cómo se we, dice. We took advantage. We took advantage. Took advantage. About the time, and, eh, Went to visit to the Basilica de Guadalupe. Went to visit. Went to visit the Basilica de Guadalupe. Yes. Okay. okay. Do you have more questions Questions for my dear Lorena? <laughs> sí, sí. How many, <laughs> how many days did you, did you stay in Mexico? I, I stayed. Uh, for one week. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay. Very good. That's it. it Thank, was you. A quickly, Thank it you. It was a quickly travel. A quickly? Travel. Yes. And, uh, and also working is like not enough time to do many, many things that we would like to do. Okay, my dears, mm. I appreciate the practice. So let me just let me move you back to the main room. You did a great job. You're using uh, very well the past tense, only just a few uh, recommendations to improve. But let me close and go back, okay?
in order to conclude. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Analiza. No abandonó. Está en mi teacher. Teacher. Hello. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> okay, I I I don't know why the program keep me in the in the in the in your room it didn't move me <laughs> i don't know why okay it's a crazy thing okay listen thank you you did a great job speaking that's the idea of this practice the idea is that you can speak more than the teacher do and only the teacher is a facilitator for you to improve your pronunciation and the coordination of the ideas right so uh, because of the okay. time, I won't cover this tonight, but for next class, we are going to study deeply the past tense of verb B, okay? So I expect that with this class, it's gonna be clear, just in case you have any doubt. So this is gonna happen next Monday. By now, I just would like to ask you to please go to the platform, uh, maybe tomorrow in order that you can be free Saturday and, and Sunday and to rest. But I will appreciate if you can conclude all the knowledge check for section number four, okay? If you have any doubt or question, you can contact me and I will try to do my best to help you, okay? And the idea is that for coming Monday, all of us can start together the section five, which is the last one in this module, okay? Do you have questions so far? Um, I just have one. If we finish the section number five, what do I do uh, when I finish? Immediately you finish, you have to print your diploma. This is something that you have to do immediately. Immediately you send them the final test, the final test answers all in green color or completely correct. Uh, and you score 100% in your big score, you immediately uh, print your diploma, please. And I can see the score on the platform. Uh, yes, yes, I think that there's a section where you can see my advanced level, um, right? So you have okay. to look for the buttons and check there, and then you will see your advance. Please uh, make sure before sending the, uh, final uh, exam that you have concluded all the previous knowledge check okay. and all the previous exercises and that you grade 100. Because okay. if, you, if you grade less than 100 in all of them, at the end it can uh, maybe measure less than 80%. And remember that you, have, you need to have 80% at least to have your diploma. That's why okay. I always offer my support in order that all of you can pass with 100% to make sure okay. that you have your diploma with no problems, okay? Okay, and it doesn't matter if we cannot finish yet the classes, right? It, do, it doesn't matter. If you have the, the time right now, because you know that next week is gonna be very busy for you and you want and you have the time and you know how to advance, you can do it, okay? No, there's no problem. Okay. Uh, what I highly recommend you is when you finish, you print your diploma, you download it as a PDF format because that's a credential for you and that's a credential for continuing in the program because they're, they're going to request you the diploma in order to enroll you to the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably, okay. probably this weekend they are going to send you the request of your paperwork to start in the next module, right? The case, to uh, don't stop too much. 
in my case, the um, English Corporativo already did it. Okay, yeah, that, it, the idea is that you don't stay like two weeks waiting, that you can start the most uh, in the way possible. And um, okay. uh, of course, you are more than welcome to the class because remember that the class is a sticking uh, space for you, for your improvement in listening, pronunciation, and your speaking practice. Okay. Okay, my dears, if you don't have more questions, please go to bed, rest, and enjoy your weekend. Okay? Thank you. Rest as much yeah. as you can. You <laughs> okay. too. Peter. Thank rest. you. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Good, Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye.